Hey, it's Jeff. Welcome to another edition of the CyberCoach Internet Catapult. I'm really excited to share this particular video with you because this is really the master system that will uh, help you ultimately get as many clients as you could ever uh, imagine coaching, at least one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, this video is how to build an internet coaching client machine how to build an internet coaching client machine and you're actually going to see the machine today and, and get a get a sense of what the uh, totality of this machine actually looks like and uh, one of the things I noticed when uh, I started teaching a little bit about the mechanics of getting leads from the internet for your coaching practice or your coaching business is that uh, I would explain the stuff and I would teach the stuff and then people would not follow through on it and I started to realize that one of the problems was that it was hard to conceptualize not why it works because we kind of understand why these types of things work but it's hard to conceptualize what the whole thing looks like so you're really going to be able to visualize this because I'm going to show it to you in this video so let's get started so what you're going to learn in this video we're going to start with results to expect what can you expect as a result of having this machine in your uh, practice or your business. We're also going to view the machine as I promised. You're also going to learn how to build the machine. This is the hardest part for uh, many coaches is not really understanding the machine or getting excited about it but but actually building the darn thing. I mean that's that's the hardest part for, for most people is the execution, the implementation. So you're going to learn how to do that today. And then also, finally, how to maintain this machine because once you build it, there is some maintenance and I'm going to give you a really clear understanding of what exactly you need to focus on to maintain this machine and make it really successful for your coaching business. Okay, let's roll with results to expect. So, I started my coaching business in the year 2000 and I uh, started with nothing really and you might have even seen the trailer video where I started after I uh, uh, left Tony Robbins and things improved over a period of years. They got better and better. We got more and more clients. Uh, we made more and more money until I arrived in about 2007 and we hit the peak. We hit the apex in our business and we were making 30000 a month. In fact, you might have heard the video that was even titled how to make 30,000 a month in your coaching business and uh, I thought this was fantastic and I was ready to go to 100,000 a month and, and get even more clients I was just so excited about the business and then the real estate crash occurred and we took a dive and by the way if you didn't know uh, most of our clients were realtors. In fact, I think it was almost half our business was in the real estate industry. That's what the, the business was based upon. Uh, those the people that worked in that industry, those were our clients. And so very quickly after the crash, we started losing clients, just left and right. And so we took a dive and then things got worse. We had an employee that embezzled from the company. And so I arrived in 2008 and lo and behold, the real recession began because the real estate crash was just the impetus for that. It didn't happen really until about 2008. And I arrived at kind of a hitting bottom point. I don't know if you've ever been there, but uh, being in a place where you, ju you just you don't know if you can go on uh, the same way that you have. You don't know if you're going to make it to the next month, the next day. And this could be health-wise, financially, in a relationship. I mean, any area of your life you could have those hitting bottom points and actually what's what's interesting is when you hit bottom you have that worst day or that worst moment it actually can be a really great thing because it gives you the motivation and the impetus to make a change which is exactly what happened when I arrived in 2008 fifteen thousand in debt uh, with very little income to speak of at that point I was really just trying to pick up the pieces from the real estate crash that had happened uh, uh, about a year earlier and that's when I finally decided I'm going to make some changes in my business. I'm not going to let this recession or depression or whatever you want to call it uh, end my coaching career. And so that's when I actually started to build the machine. So at that moment, I start building the machine and things started to get better. They started to improve until I actually reached about ten to 20000 a month in consistent income. And now, of course, we're in 2010, if you're watching this one just after I made it, of course. So that's where, that's where I am basically at this point. That's where I am now. 
And now you might say, well, Jeff, you're not making as much as you were before uh, the uh, real estate crash and things like that. Like, what's the problem? I thought this is supposed to be such this this great machine that's going to build this this huge uh, business for you. And I probably could be making more uh, than even what what I'm making now. But I paid off all the debt, you know, so I'm free and clear as far as any debt, and I'm pulling in ten. 10 to 20,000 a month. But here's the real difference between the apex that I hit in 2007 and uh, where I am now in 2010. In 2007, that was active income. I had to work for every bit of that income. There was coaching clients or working with my team. I was actively managing a team. That's how we were building uh, the business and how we were actually delivering the coaching. Uh, I was doing speaking engagements. I mean, it was a job. It wasn't a business. I had a big job called go go out and get a bunch of business and figure out how to make it all work. And at this point in 2010, the vast majority, almost all of that 10 to 20,000 a month in income is passive income. So that is not just a money thing, it's a quality of life thing. It is I mean, I just can't describe how much better my life is in 2010. In 2007, uh, I know I was doing some traveling, but it was it's nothing near what I'm able to do now, two months out of the year. Uh, and uh, I also, I, I mean, I can take time off whenever I need to. I'm totally flexible. And uh, I don't have to make a zillion calls. I don't. I haven't done a bunch of speaking engagements lately. And and by the way, speaking engagements are great. They're a great way to build your business. But for me, they're kind of a lot of trouble. You got to prepare. You got to really practice your stuff. And I want to share my ideas. I, I like doing this kind of stuff, uh, like this video that you're watching now. So it's just a different life for me. And uh, even if you do want active income, you want to go out and speak, and you want to go out and really pound the pavement and kick butt and uh, and just work your fingers to the bone, so to speak. Uh, and that's fine if you do. This machine that I started building you know, around 2008 can actually add to your business. It can be there even when you don't speak or when you don't make all those calls. So it can even make your business bigger if you do the active stuff as well. The combination can be very powerful too. So that's just a little history on, on where I came from. Literally, I started really seriously building an internet coaching client machine uh, no more than two years ago. Literally, really a year and a half ago to be to really f be fair to myself and uh, what I've accomplished so far. So a year and a half ago, that's what it took. A year and a half later, ten to 20000 a month, 90% uh, of that's from the internet. So here's how the money actually comes in. Uh, using this machine that I'm talking about. And so we, we do these things that we call launches. You probably have experienced one of these, probably why you're watching this video is because you actually saw us do a launch and open up a registration for Master Coach Council or something else. And this is the 2009 launch revenue. This is the first full year that I was actually really seriously marketing uh, services on the internet. So we did uh, the Quick Start Coaching Code launch uh, last year, and we did about 2,800 in revenue, and we got 22 people into that particular program. The next launch I've got on this little list is the DVD launch, and that was 5,800 in revenue, and we had 10 people buy the DVDs. Next launch I'll share is the Coaches Training launch, and we did 28,000 in revenue, and we had 21 people in the coaches training that time around. And guess what? We did two coaches trainings in 2009. So we also did another $26,000 launch. Uh, that's the revenue that number that we hit. And we had 23 people in that particular coaches training. So, you know, when you add it all up, just launch revenues, this was pretty much on the internet, amounted to over $57,000 in, uh, in somewhat passive, and uh, and all over pretty much over the internet uh, revenue. Now here's a little bit more because I didn't just do launches last year. We also in a coaching company you also have what's called continuity income and continuity income continuity programs are monthly payment type of programs. Most coaching programs are continuity programs. They're monthly pay programs. So this is the 2009 continuity income. This is just a monthly estimate. So first, of course, the Master Coach Council. We've got about 30 people in Master Coach right now. I pull in about 1,500 
uh, a month from Master Coach. Coaching, about 5000 a month from coaching still. Or we have a coaching d division. We do about 5000 a month in coaching business. We have mentoring also. I personally mentor the people, some of the people on my team, uh, some of the coaches on my team, and that's about 1500 a month in revenue. So we've got about 21 people uh, in coaching and mentoring combined. And then assessment revenue. This is a, a one aspect of our company where we offer psychographic profiles to businesses and individual clients. And uh, we have about 30 of those uh, clients that we worked with in 2009. And we pull in about 500 a month from assessment revenue. So this is all. These are all monthly numbers that we pull in. And so the total estimated continuity uh, income is 8,500. A month. Now you might be saying, "Well, wait a second, Jeff. Uh, some of this doesn't come from the internet, does it? Does it all come from the internet?" And to be fair uh, to that argument, the coaching and assessment revenue, generally speaking, is not internet revenue. That's actually comes in from partners and from networking and from the, kind of the old school stuff. So I'll just take that out of the equation, just to be fair to what we do with the uh, machine itself. So total internet continuity income is about three thousand a month. So when you add the 3000 a month to the launches, we're talking about almost a six-figure uh, revenue stream just from the Internet in 2009. Of course, we had other revenue streams as well, so we definitely did over six figures in revenue uh, in, in 2009, no doubt about that. Uh, but the point I was trying to make with this is that the Internet was the majority of that, and it was my first year, really my first full year doing it. And... Uh, and it was not only consistent monthly income, continuity income, but also big lump sums that came from launches that we actually did as well. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the results that you can expect. There's nothing special about me. You know, I have certain skills, but you know, you, you have skills that I don't have. So you bring those to the table on the internet and you're gonna see some amazing results. So okay, let's get to viewing the machine. So the machine really starts with one thing and it also I would even put it this way that it's like the beginning and the end of the machine the whole purpose of the machine the central focus of the machine the whole idea of having this internet coaching client machine is this little thing that we call the list the list is what it's all about and what I mean by this is uh, that you have a list of prospective clients now, of course, we all have lists of people we know. Uh, most of us have like Outlook or some kind of database or black book of contacts. Uh, but that's not exactly what I'm talking about in terms of this list. This list is a list that's held in an internet database. It's, it's a, uh, held in what people call an autoresponder or a list server database. Call it what you will, but it's really, this, this list is managed on the internet and the purpose of it is to communicate with people on the internet and this list and building this list is the whole point of having this machine in the first place if there's another point other than just getting clients from this this is the point because this list and the bigger this list is the the more likely you are to get coaching clients so the this list uh, could be an AWeber account. If you go to AWeber.com, it could be one shopping cart. Uh, it could be Constant Contact. It could be Infusionsoft if you really want to spend some money and have a really fancy uh, database. But all of these are just database programs that you can use, uh, which which will house your list for you, and people will actually opt in onto these lists on the internet. So again, why do, why do we want this list and why is this list so, so important? Well, because we can actually can communicate and offer things to this list and that will actually result in sales ultimately. If you have a small list, it'll probably make a few small sales. If you have a big list, that means that you're going to produce some big sales. So the bigger the list, the more sales you'll produce. And isn't that what we're trying to work on in, in our coaching business? Isn't that what we're trying to produce is somebody to actually buy our coaching, right? So the size of your list will, uh, will dramatically affect uh, the s amount of sales that you actually make in your coaching business. And that's why this list is really the center of the Internet Coaching Client Machine universe.
And by the way, after you get sales, you're going to create partnerships from some of those individuals, uh, repeat business, referral business. You'll get team members as a result. Really, almost everything you ever wanted comes from having a great list of people that love what you do. It's like they get convinced that what you do is really valuable and it's quality and they want it to support you in continuing to do it because they benefit from it and so they become they become a repeat client they become uh, someone who refers other people to to you because they want you to be successful they become team members because they want to work closer with you they become your partner because they want to figure out what you're doing and contribute in some way and they they want to join forces the, all this stuff comes from this list which comes from sales and comes from people that are kind of checking you out of the internet. I remember uh, last year there was a gentleman who, uh, he's a stage hypnotist and he's very, very well known. Uh, he's been on all the major talk shows and uh, if I mention his name, you'd probably know uh, who he is. And he just happened to be on my list uh, for whatever reason. And uh, he called me up one day and said, hey, I would like you to train all of my clients that I have around the world in how to coach. Uh, we had somebody that was doing that before, but they moved on, and I've been watching you for a while. That's a, I, I'm quoting. That's exactly what he said. He said, I've been watching you for a while, and I want to work with you. So that's a partner that came from this list. So you'll get all sorts of cool things. Now, I'm not saying you don't have to do other things. I mean, obviously, there's going to be some times when you just go ahead and call a partner up or you're proactive with it, but a lot of this is going to happen just as a result of having this list. So in order to build this list, of course, we need this giant machine that f just flew in behind the list to help feed this list. That's the whole purpose of the machine is you're building the list, building the list. In fact, once you've got the list, you can almost like break the machine and you'll still make sales for the rest of your life. Once you've got the list, you don't need to be amazing at all the things I'm going to teach you, although you will be, so you'll be able to build a bigger and bigger list and it just gets more and more fun ultimately. So this machine is going to be pouring uh, new subscribers into your list over time. So let's take a look at what that is. So the first thing, and we've talked about this before, is this thing that we call a squeeze page. Uh, this is basically some page or some internet uh, web page out there in the ether that people can actually uh, opt in with. They can, uh, this little red box here shows where you can put your name, email, and phone number. Uh, and then that's what we call an opt in. So people end up on this page and they want what you're offering, and, uh, and, and then they uh, enter their information, and then guess what? Now they're on your list. That's really all there is to it. If you get anybody who uh, has any idea how to set up a website on, on the internet, somebody that you'd pay $15, $20 an hour for, uh, they can set this up for you. So this is not rock and science. That's what we call an opt-in. So that little page creates opt-ins into the list. Then you can sell to that list and you can create sales. Is this making sense? I hope it is. Okay, so now the big question marks here, or the small ones, I guess that's not they're not that big. I should have made those bigger. <laughs> anyway, so those question marks are really there to remind me that you're probably asking the question at this point, but why are people going to opt in? Why are people going to sign up on my list on this little page? Am I going to be like super uh, uh, influential? Am I going to write some kind of tricky copy that's going to get them excited? Like, What am I going to do to convince them to, uh, uh, to opt in on my list? Am I just going to offer them a newsletter and they're just going to magically do it? Well, the answer is no. They're, they're not going to opt in on your list if those are the types of things that you're trying to do to get them to opt in. The reason they opt in is because uh, you offer them an ebook, like this How to Run a Coach Mastermind that, that you can read anytime. It's a short little ebook, and I could offer that as an incentive to get people to opt in. Or, like I've done for a year and a half now, uh, really cool videos on a free video blog, which is one of the reasons you may be watching this video right now and working with me. Right, so these are uh, what we call uh, incentives, and when they opt in on the list, they're really opting in so they can get that incentive or those incentives from you. And the better your incentives, the easier it is to grow your list. the 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 not the the less uh, valuable your incentives are, the less clear you are about communicating what those incentives are, uh, the less exciting your incentives are to the people that are uh, actually uh, thinking of and considering opting into your list, the harder it is to get this list built. So your incentives, you've got to concentrate on having awesome free incentives because they're really not free. 
they're paying with their uh, their time, their energy to opt in. They're paying with their email if it's a valid email. They're, I mean, how many, how much time are they going to waste getting emails from you? They're they're wondering about that. They don't know that you're not going to ever bother them with some waste of time email. They they have no idea because there's competition on the web that is get, capturing people's emails that have taken advantage of that, and they haven't done good business. So you got to have an awesome incentive to get a valid. Uh, email and that list plus the incentive is the key uh, to this system really because over time you can offer more incentives and you can offer like in this case like another video then another video and as you offer those incentives a couple things happen first of all the people on your list will come back to your site to check out those incentives plus they'll want to stay on your list because you're continuing to offer even better and better stuff so does this make sense? Because, hey, what happens when people opt into your list? Well, what we know over time is that then they opt out because they got the incentives and they're like, well, I don't want to hear from this person. I'll, I'll go back to their site when I feel like it. And then they just opt out of your list and then you lost them. So what will keep them around is, is keep giving them incentives and they check out the incentives and they say, well, I want to stay on this list or even better, they want to opt in with a different email. They want to opt in with a more private email, let's say, that they only let certain people uh, have. Uh, I mean, don't you have two emails? I mean, most people do nowadays. They have their public email that they just hand out to everybody. Then they get like 400 emails a day on that one because everybody's spamming them. And then they have their like private email that nobody else knows about except for like, like their closest 20 friends or their closest business associates or whatever. And that's the list that you want to get on because they check that list like they check that email account like three times a day or more. The other one they check like once a week when they want to just feel good about themselves because they got a zillion emails, right? So when people first opt in, they probably aren't going to give you the best email. They're probably going to give you like a secondary email or maybe not even a real email. But once they get that incentive or once they get another email from you that gets them an, an even better incentive, they're probably going to come back and give you an even better email, especially if you throw up an interest list or something like that for a special launch you're doing. So you'll it's not just the list, it's your relationship with the list that you're developing and that means really good incentives and then opportunities for them to opt in again to add a better and better and a closer email list. By the way, I do this all the time. I mean if I want to get an incentive, I'll just put in my regular email and I'll get the incentives and check it out. And yeah, eventually I'll get around to checking the emails from them as well. But if I notice that after I've opted in, that they really treated me with respect and they gave me some really good stuff, uh, after a while, once I see that, wow, this is really awesome stuff, they got some of the best stuff I've seen on the videos they offer, on the PDFs that they offer, whatever they're offering, I'm actually going to actively give them my more private email. And so I've got maybe five or ten key uh, uh key list that I'm a part of with my private email versus like probably the 50 lists I'm a part of in my more public email and a lot of people are doing that so you want to be ready to offer more incentives and it's not before they opt in that is the key although that's important too it's after they opt in and how you treat them with those ongoing incentives so make sure that you handle that part uh, that that's in the machine so now, again, I got my little reminder with my little question marks. One of the questions you might be asking is, well, this looks really fantastic. I mean, you could get people to opt in, and you got an incentive, and they keep coming back for more, and they like you more and more every day. But uh, how do you get people to show up on this squeeze page? I mean, do I have to go to a uh, some networking mixer every day and hand out uh, business cards that have that squeeze page on it so people will go opt in? And by the way, you could do that. I mean, that's a... Uh, it's kind of combining an old school, school strategy with a new school strategy. But I'm going to show you how you can get massive amounts of people to show up at this list or at this squeeze page, that is. So you can at least gi give yourself a chance to get them to opt in uh, on your list. So the way that you're going to do that uh, instantly, you could literally do this within 24 hours, is you're going to get a Google AdWords account. You're going to advertise on Google. Or... Uh, or hopefully in addition to, you also can do that on Facebook, and Facebook is a huge opportunity to do advertising on Facebook as well. You can pick the demographic that you want to advertise to. Uh, it's uh, it's a really good opportunity. So I would suggest you actually use both of these, and, and you can generate traffic to this 
uh, to this squeeze page, and that's what we call PPC advertising or pay per click advertising. So Google and Facebook are both valid places to do pay per click advertising now, and you should consider using both of them to get instant what we call traffic to that little squeeze page. So you have traffic to the squeeze page, and then they opt in, and they're, they're getting the incentives, they're on your list, and then you can sell to them. That's really three steps. Uh, and this little piece of the machine, and there's more to it than this, but this little piece right here is uh, the first kind of phase of building the list, and we'll get to that a little later. But in addition to that, this is like the simplest form of the machine you could possibly build. So all you got to deal with is creating an incentive so that you can advertise on Google and Facebook, get people to your list, or get people to your squeeze page, have them opt into your list, and then you figure out a way to sell to them at that point. This is the machine in a nutshell. Now, the next question is, okay, well, you said I'm going to build this list, and I can see how I can do that now. Uh, but how do I get the sales? How do I actually produce sales now? Well, there's several ways you can do that. And first of all, I'd suggest you start with direct sales. Just keeping it simple. And you know that just means call the people that opted in your list. About a third of them, if you give them an option to enter their phone number, will actually enter their phone number. Uh, or you can email them directly. Uh, or you can sell, send them a mass email and ask them to call you as well. And we've already talked about in the Master Coach Council methods by which you can actually do that. But direct sales is where it all starts. You got a list, now call them, talk to them, find out about them, create a relationship, and actually set a free session with them. You can also create conference calls and get the, this list to get on the conference call with you so you can offer them uh, some program or offer them a free session or something like that gives them more value you've got a captive audience you're speaking in front of them you've got some leverage and then you can ask them to do something that'll turn into a sale for you also webinars of course so these are the simplest things that you can do and these are just one-offs these are things that uh, hey you can start a webinar or a conference call next week if you got a couple hundred on your list you can email that list and, and invite them to show up at that conference and guess what you're probably gonna get some people at that conference call or that webinar Webinar, direct sales as well it's pretty simple so anybody can do this and uh, this is where you should really start beyond that however I like to do what's called a launch and a launch is the way to get the most out of even the smallest lists it's a way of selling your coaching services and a launch combines surveys and conference calls and videos and an offer and a sales letter, just all the different things on the internet that you can use to get people to want to do what you would like them to do. And it brings it all together with kind of this ultimate, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts type of experience. Uh, that's what you want to create for your list. And when you do a launch, you can, you I guarantee you do a launch well, uh, you're, you're going to get people to uh, buy your stuff. Now, here's the other cool thing. The launch, if you haven't noticed... Some of these things in the launch also are incentives, uh, videos, conference calls, etc. These are things that you can add to your video blog or whatever it is, and, uh, and people will really appreciate that too. So the launch isn't just you saying, hey, you're on my list, so buy my stuff. It's you saying, hey, I'd like to give you even more stuff that's even better than the last stuff I gave you. Uh, and by the way, if you want like the premium level of this or you want the, uh, uh, you want the, the other secrets that... Uh, I've got to share with you, then uh, you can buy my coaching. You know that that's really the, the the spirit of the communication that you're having during a launch. People, generally speaking, near the end of the launch, sometimes I will lose some people from my list because I'm getting a little bit more kind of uh, pit bull with them on, hey, you got to get in now or it's going away. And some people sometimes that that'll uh, kind of bend their finger back the wrong way a little bit. Uh, but for the most part, I'd say like 90% of what happens in a launch is really positive and people love to get the material and get the information. And really, the people that are probable buyers from you, they're not going to get upset. They're going to love what you're doing and they'll want to talk to you during this launch process. So it adds incentives. It gets them to want to come back to the list even more. Plus, it gets them wanting your stuff that eventually they're going to buy. Now, Beyond that, you can also add more fuel to the fire and get a, even a bigger list by creating your own public blog system. And this is just our public blog. There's a little screenshot of it right there. And uh, the little box in red 
uh, is enveloping uh, what we call a, a sidebar. And that sidebar will put people directly on the list as well. So that's like a mini squeeze page within our blog. It's just a little sidebar, and it'll get people to go after the incentive from the blog. So the, every blog page and every blog article becomes its own little squeeze page as well. So that's a sidebar. Also, we like to do this thing called a slide up. And you can get a slide up at instantslideup.com. And the slide up, actually, we've gotten uh, tons of opt ins from our slide up. And I think part of it's because it moves. Uh, it uh, kind of takes your attention when uh, you actually uh, when you come on the site because you see it sliding up basically. And uh, now the people that come to the sites like two zillion times that might be a little annoying. They got to close a little sidebar or the slide up that is. But uh, let me tell you, it gets us a lot of opt ins because it drives traffic to that squeeze page and then they actually opt in to the list as well. So those are two different ways that the blog will actually produce. Uh, new opt-ins from the traffic, usually SEO traffic, people from Google and stuff finding us for free. By the way, also on the blog are little, these little what we call friend me buttons. And uh, we've got one that will get you to my Facebook page and one that will get you to my Twitter page and one that will get you to LinkedIn, uh, my LinkedIn account. Eventually we're going to put one up for our YouTube page as well. And by the way, every one of these pages, if they friend me or they follow me, these are all little mini lists as well. So even if you don't want to be on my list, you could always be on my list. <laughs> so, But by the way, do you not think of friending somebody or following somebody on Twitter uh, or YouTube or subscribing to your YouTube channel? Do you not think of that a little bit differently than, uh, than an opt-in uh, uh, of giving up your email? Of course we do. It's a little bit less of a commitment. So I want to give that option to people that will still want to stay in touch. And guess what? This creates its own little ecosystem. So I've got, a, I've got the search engine hits from my blog that are subscribing to uh, Facebook or Twitter. And then also the people on Facebook and Twitter are finding my blog because I guess what I do? I put updates on all of these little accounts, and there's easy ways to do it uh, in almost an automated fashion. And so people that are following me on Facebook or Twitter, I didn't even get them on the blog yet, but they decided to friend me or I friended them. They then see that I wrote an article about coaching or whatever I'm writing the article about, and they go to the blog to see it, and then they got a chance to possibly opt in as a result. So this creates its own little ecosystem and its own set of incentives and its own set, set of opt-in lists uh, in every one of these little pieces of social media and also uh, on the blog, ultimately. So again, I want to be clear that the traffic and the attention from these two areas uh, come from two separate places. The blog... Uh, the traffic comes from search engines uh, that just found me on the internet. They just found me in the ether and they were like, hey, if you're searching for this, this guy wrote a blog post about it, right? So people hit the blog and then if they don't opt in, maybe they'll join me on Twitter or Facebook. And in addition to that, we can proactively pursue people on Facebook and Twitter, etc., and get our list bigger on there and then they'll go check out the blog because they're good prospects for us as well. So our blog builds our social media, our social media activities build our blog and it's just an upward spiral that goes better and better and better and then you're the king of the world or the queen of the world. Uh, I say that uh, light, uh, with a little bit of levity of course but hopefully you get the idea that this is a little ecosystem that you have to build. It's not just a blog, it's not just doing Twitter, it's both. It's both of those. That's what creates the value. Now, by the way, here's the other thing. On the blog as well, if you're really tech savvy, you might end up opting into what's called an RSS uh, reader or, uh, or opting into our RSS uh, feed, what well, they call it a feed. And what RSS stands for is real simple syndication. That just means that you, you might be interested in being able to read every single article that I write uh, without having to go on my blog and see it and you want to have it come in in almost like an email fashion, but you don't want it to come in in your email. And so they have these what we call RSS readers, and Yahoo's got one, and, and Google Reader is an, is an RSS reader. That's the one I recommend. And uh, you can actually use these little readers and insert a link, or I don't know exactly how they do it, but somehow you, you actually, every day that there is a new article, It'll pop up in your reader, and you see, oh, hey, Coach's Training Blog has got a new article. I want to read that. And you can literally read it right inside your reader, ultimately. So it's like a blog that comes and finds you 
at Google Reader. So people can opt into the RSS feed as well. So these are there's lots of little lists, but ultimately the outcome here is to get that email and get them to opt in on the sidebar of the slide up uh, onto the big list. So this little ecosystem also feeds our ultimate outcome that we're after here uh, with the machine. And by the way, every one of these little lists uh, I can feed the big list via special events. So I can post, let's say, a special event on Facebook and say, hey, I'm having a Facebook event and you can come to this event and guess what? Part, uh, as you're logging into that event, I'm going to say, hey, uh, you should, if you want to watch this other videos, you can come to my incentive site and my incentive site, uh, you know, it will give you like 15 hours worth of free videos. And if you come to that site, uh, you're going to have to opt in, right? So all these little special events that I could hold on these other places uh, can guide traffic to a squeeze page or ask them to opt in in order to be a part of the special event. There's all sorts of different ways to do it. But hopefully you understand that not just the blog is a place where people opt into our big list, but every one of these little lists can then be passed on to the big list as well. And that's something you want to include in your strategy. By the way, uh, another item that you want to uh, really get clear on and understand is that as we do launches, launches create ideas because it's a dialogue. The surveys that I do, uh, see, uh, uh, talking to people while they're buying the product, uh, answering questions via email, uh, checking out the uh, comments that are on the, the different blogs and the comments that are on social media. All the activities of the launch gives us ideas and insight on what's going on with these really cool uh, prospective clients that we're working with. And those ideas give us the understanding on how we can improve our blog and improve our social media and improve our incentives and improve our squeeze page. We understand our clients in a deeper and deeper way every time we do a launch. And as a result of that, we get better at building an even cooler machine that uh, that stays ahead of all our competition as well. So just don't forget these launches are helpful for the top end of this machine, not just to produce some sales. Now, the interesting thing is once you've built a bit of a list, uh, you probably have heard of JVs or joint ventures. And the point with joint ventures is that there are thousands, or basically intensively, there's there's infinite number of people out there that have got their own list and they have your customers already they have your prospects already they have the right people that you want to touch that you want to work with they got that stuff already and they're just waiting to talk to you especially if you've got a list too because they probably want to talk to your people on your list that's why they would be open or willing to create a joint venture in the first place so with joint ventures, they're ultimately going to send you traffic or people or whatever, and they'll send you people to opt in to your list because they've endorsed you and endorsed your incentives, let's say. Now, what you're going to do in order to get that to happen is you're going to create some special events or you, somehow you're going to promote those joint ventures, and you're going to promote them with all the different lists that you have. So you're going to help them out, and then there's so many different joint ventures that you could have, so many different people that you can work with. This is, again, an ecosystem where you're helping them and they're helping you. And by the way, uh, just, to, just to clarify, all your lists, every one of them, are lists that you can uh, use to help uh, endorse and uh, ultimately promote the joint venture partner. So you don't just have to have a bunch of people on your central list. You can have some people on Facebook and Twitter and you endorse and, uh, this other person and uh, you can send them opt-ins from uh, those lists as well. And then, and once you do that and you do that well, those joint ventures are going to want to have people opt in to your list also. They're going to help you out too. So it's just a reciprocation game and it really does work. It produces sales. It produces opt-ins. It will grow your business. Okay, so uh, hopefully that confused you with just, uh, just enough to uh, get you wondering how to build this complex contraption. And so I'm going to go through the steps of how to build the machine. So here's our machine, of course, as you just saw. So there, we're going to build these in phases. In the first phase, the real question you're asking, because there's usually a lot of uncertainty about this, is can I build a list? Can I just build a list at all? And so the first step you need to take is to set up 
this list and actually just start building it manually. Just go ahead and do it the old school way at first. Just set up the list, start adding people to the list. Step two is you're going to set up this resource blog or you're going to create your incentives. I would suggest you set up a resource blog that will house the incentives anyway, no matter what they are. So go ahead and set up that resource blog. That's step two. And then finally, step three is that you're going to set up your squeeze page and your PPC campaigns, your Google and Facebook ad campaigns to drive traffic to that uh, squeeze page that you set up so you can uh, build lists to this uh, incentive. And uh, the goal for phase one is, let's say it's about 200 subscribers, just to get the ball rolling so you know you got some people that are on this list. And then you know, hey, if you can make, if you can get 200 subscribers, you can get 2,000, you can get 200,000 eventually. And you're not doing it perfect yet, and that might cost you some money or whatever, but, uh, but it's just a proving point that you know, okay, I'm on my way. I got 200 subscribers out of this little thing, this little mini machine here. And uh, the answer to the question, can I build a list, is unequivocally yes. So let's move on to phase two, which is can I make sales? So step four in this entire process in, in phase two is to, first of all, just make some one-on-one -on -one direct or e-commerce sales. So one-on-one -on -one direct or e-commerce sales. So call them. Uh, you know, do something to get people to buy something on on, an, on a shopping cart, whatever it is. But y you just got to work on making some sales with that list. You got to figure that out. So that's step four. Step five is to run an actual launch. So you, it might take a while to be ready for this, but there's a lot of different facets to a launch. Uh, we'll be doing more in uh, more detailed videos about launches as we go in the Master Coach Council, but we've already run uh, several uh, videos about launches. And uh, not to mention that you can also, of course, see just what I do in a launch, I mean, because you've probably seen that. It's all, all those emails are in your inbox, and you can copy what I do. You know, there's surveys, there's conference calls, videos, offers, sales letters, etc. You want to run a launch, and that will help, definitely help you to make sales. So the goal for phase two uh, is just to make some money. And so and once you've made some money, then you can answer the question, can I make sales with a big fat yes? Let's move on to phase three. And phase three, the question is, can I repeat it? Can I do this again? And we're not just going to do it just one more time and hope that it all works out again. We're going to do it bigger this time. So step six is that you're going to set up a blog and social media. You're going to set up this little blog social media ecosystem. And then you're going to run another launch. That's step seven. So you're just going to try to grow your list bigger and then run another launch. And the goals in this section or in this phase is to just make more sales and get a larger list. More sales and a larger list. Uh, once you make sales twice or you make sales again in another phase uh, and your list is still getting bigger, you're going to know that you can repeat this thing. And that's going to give you an added level of confidence in this internet coaching client machine. Phase four is, the question is, can I JV? Can I get partners? By this time, hopefully you got four or 500 in your list, if not more. A thousand is really uh, helpful. But uh, when you've got a decent list, uh, you know, half, half, a, uh, half a thousand, you know, 500 or a thousand people on your list, then you should be uh, in a position to start pursuing JV. So the question is in phase four, can I JV? And step eight is to uh, just go ahead and use special events to promote a partner. Remember to use all your lists, promote them across the social media sphere, and do a blog post about your partner and, and email your list about them. So do everything you can. Really work hard to promote those special events with your JVs. And it's all about them. It's all about promoting them. It's about them making a sale. It's about them building their list. Help them and make a difference. You want to lead with the giving hand. That's where it all starts with these JVs. And then the next step, step nine, will be that the JV is going to do a special event to promote you. And you'll get opt-ins and you'll make sales as a result of that. And the goals in this section, I hope this is familiar with uh, for you at this point, which is that you're going to make more sales and you'll have a larger list. So that was phase three, was make more sales and have a larger list. So we're just doing all these different things to make more sales and have an even larger list in the process. And so that's phase four, can I JV? Finally, moving on to phase five and phase six. And these are bonus phases at this point. I'm going to cover these in deeper detail as we go in the Master Coach Council. But phase five is, can I retire? 
<laughs> phase five is can I retire? Can I can I do this more passively? Because this is a very active process, as if you haven't noticed, and there's a lot to do here. So the question then is not, oh, can I sell enough? Can I have enough coaching clients? The question is, okay, well, can I just do this if I feel like it, but not when I not always have to do it? And then phase six is can I what I call empire? Can I build this into an empire? And uh, and those are two very distinct phases. And if you choose to go all the way to phase five and phase six, uh, there's a whole nother level that you'll be at. And uh, not just in terms of your quality of life and your freedom, but also another level in terms of uh, the respect that you'll get from your clients and uh, because there's going to be a ton of them, uh, not to mention the respect that you'll have from other people in the industry because you will uh, be known to have your own empire basically so really this is step 10 and this is to automate your launches automate your advertising and automate your social media and blogs there's ways to automate all of this uh, yes it can be a little complicated at times but the the uh, the real payoff is just priceless it's a priceless payoff I know uh, around the turn of the year I automated w our quick start launch and so now if you opt in as a new person you'll go through uh, literally go through a launch in an automated fashion uh, over a period of about 20 days and that's causing people to buy the quick start program without uh, me even knowing it it's, it's, it's happening while I sleep so to speak or while I'm you know I'm just not even around or I'm out of town or whatever so I've automated those launches, and we've got blogs that are automated. We've got advertising that's automated. All this stuff is the most easily automatable stuff in the world. you got to build quality stuff, and that can take time at first. But once you've built it, it's like building a house. It's hard to build it, but once you've built it, people can move in and rent from you, and you got income for life, or at least as long as they rent from you. So that's the retirement uh, strategy here with this uh, machine. And, of course, if you do this long enough, uh, and you multiply yourself via automation, you're going to get the empire. Phase six is going to occur. So that's really how to build the machine. Now let's cover how do you maintain this thing? How do you maintain the machine? If you've built this and it's really running well for you, uh, you got to be maintaining it uh, so you can constantly grow your business. If you don't maintain your machine, you're going to have trouble somewhere along the way and your machine will die. So I want you to think about this in different focuses. And really, there's only four focuses. Uh, the first focus is traffic. You got to figure out how to get a ton of traffic uh, to different web pages and blogs and your squeeze pages and things like that. I mean, y you just got to do that. So that's focus number one: is generating traffic on the internet. Focus number two is uh, how do I get people to opt in? You know, what are my incentives? How do I communicate those incentives? How do I get more opt-ins per per the traffic that is coming in? How do I raise those opt-in percentages? Uh, that's going to be pretty important, uh, and uh, you got to generate more and more opt-ins. Uh, that's part of what keeps your business uh, functioning in an efficient way. Focus number three is how do I make sales? You know, this is an obvious one. You got to keep focusing on sales at some level, whether it's automated or live. And the final focus, focus number four, is uh, all these lists. You got to check out who's on the list and see what's going on and share your list uh, with uh, your joint venture partners, possibly have a salesperson who's following up with people on the list. You got to communicate and create a relationship with these lists. Uh, you need to focus on these lists and you need to cultivate them. If you don't cultivate a list and maintain that list properly, uh, the list will die or at least it will at least um, atrophy and uh, it won't be a very valuable list for you or your partners. Uh, in your respective businesses. So those are the four focuses. Traffic, opt-ins, uh, sales, and your lists. And that is how to build your internet coaching client machine. Now I know we didn't get into tremendous detail on the technical side of these different aspects, but really uh, all you need is somebody that you pay 20 bucks, 25 bucks an hour to for uh, maybe uh, five to ten hours max they can build the basic pages they can build the split test they can build the uh, the analytics on your blog they can build all this stuff for you and you only need to build each brick uh, um, one at a time you don't have to build it all in a day so just get those first elements started just get your squeeze page up get a webmaster to do that get them to set up a split test on Google on uh, Google web optimizer uh, get them to uh, get get your or you know sign up for a Google AdWords account and sign up for a Facebook ad uh, advertising account and start advertising that squeeze page on those accounts 
and, and see what kind of click-through rates you get. See what kind of opt-ins you get for your list. Get your list set up and create those incentives. Now, look, that might take you just to do those you know, three or four things. That could take you a month and maybe a couple hundred bucks. But you really got to do whatever it takes to, to make that investment. You, you just got to. Um, borrow the money. Find the money. Get the time. Take a month off. Go live with your parents or your brothers or your sisters or whoever that needs to be so you can concentrate on what's going to make your life uh, one that will stand out from the rest. Now, by the way, if you do all this stuff and you don't have anything of value to offer and your incentives suck and you're, and you're not a very good coach or you, you don't have any skills or you're really just you're not interested, you're not motivated, you're not doing this in a passionate or an intelligent way, none of this will pay off for you. Uh, now, by the way, it doesn't, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't do any of it because you'll, you'll try it and it won't work perfectly and you'll see it and you'll realize you've got to take yourself to another level. And that's actually good because that will motivate you to grow. It, it'll, it'll get you going. It'll, get you, it'll heat you up inside a little bit. But if you have a sense that what you've got inside is something that's pretty valuable to a certain group of people, then it's not just a matter of calling and doing speaking and just getting out there and networking and playing the political game. It's a matter of just turning on this machine so people can understand that, that you're available for them. I mean, your clients may feel very alone, very like, very much like they don't have any alternatives, any any place that they can go for help. And if it's not, I mean, if you're not going to do this for your own selfish reasons to build your empire, if you want to call it that, then do it because you care about those people who are never going to find you if you don't set up the machine. Because this machine is a heart-centered machine if you care enough about it. It's a this machine will change the world, change the, at least the worlds of your clients if you care about them and you really want to reach them. And that's really what's made the difference in our business and I hope that is what makes the difference for yours uh, because of the competition, because of the way the internet is. If you don't operate that way or you don't uh, deliver at that level, unless you're in a market where they don't have any alternative to you, uh, you, uh, you probably won't do that well. So, but if that's you, then you want to get on this today and you want to do whatever it takes to change whatever aspect of your life is stopping you from doing this, at least temporarily, so you can take a month or take a couple weeks or whatever it's going to take to set up the beginning of this machine. And I can promise you the rest of the dominoes will fall and you will be on the other side of the uh, make a difference and make money spectrum. You will be changing the world and changing lives and getting paid for it at a level that you never have before. So I hope that you do that, and I look forward to talking to you soon.